setting fade times in the light shark. I've gotten a lot of questions recently about setting fade times in the light shark, and I know there's some confusion out there, so I wanted to put those to rest with some examples in this video. I've prepared a cue list right here on my first fader, and I'm gonna double tap at the top of it to head to the cue list window. That cue list is now selected. I can also get to my selected cue list by going straight to the cue list window and then selecting that particular cue list. This cue list has three cues on it. Let's take a look at them. Q1 brings the lights on into a position. Q2 changes the color. Q3 brings in a different set of lights and also changes the position. Now we can use this to look at the cue options here in the light chart. First thing I'm gonna do is stop this cue list. If a cue is active in the light shark, like Q3 was just a second before, then I'm not able to modify the times live. However, I will be able to, if I do modify them, let's say I set this to a three second crossfade, it will change when I move off of this cue, okay? So let's go first and set the crossfade to three seconds for all three of these cues. Now, let's watch what happens. After I replayed Q1, the crossfade took, and then I see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I get a crossfade of three seconds between each Q. However, we can use the fade in and fade out times to get even more precise control. So for the sake of our example, so we can see it well, I'm going to switch the crossfade to five seconds so that it's nice and slow. Next, we have the fade in and we have the fade out controls. Now, there's a couple caveats to using the fade in and fade out controls manually, okay? Let's go ahead and set the fade in to one second on this first cue, and we'll set the fade out to three seconds. Then on the second cue, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's play through our cues. Now before we do that, remember the fade out, and this is important, is the fade out of the previous cue when this cue is fading in, okay? So when I press play here starting from scratch, I just see a fade in of one second. I don't see a three second fade out because there's nothing that we were coming from. Let's go to our second cue. Now I see a three second fade, okay, to our next cue. Now notice, if I play it again, even though the fade in is one second, this takes three seconds because the fade out from the previous cue is three seconds long. Okay, why does that happen? Well, in this case, we're not working with any parameters that we hadn't worked with in the previous queue, so whichever time is longer is going to be the time that wins. Let's look at another example. If I go to my third queue here, we can see it crossfades in at the full five seconds. Now we're going to go back to the first queue, which only fades in at one second, but fades out at three seconds. You can see that the parameters that weren't used in the previous queue came in at one second, but the ones that were used came out slowly. Let's look at the same thing on this last queue. So if I set my fade in on the last queue to a half second and my fade out to five seconds, and then we step to that queue, I now see that the lights previous fade out over five seconds, the lights from the previous queue, but the lights and parameters that are only in this queue waited and faded in at half a second in the last half second of that fade out time. As you can see, especially in a theatrical setting or a setting where you're using a lot of fade times, this can be very critical to creating the look on stage that you desire and with the right settings and the understanding of how the fades work on the given line, you can create some really great lighting with this in your next show.